Lady Dane Figueroa Aditi, performance artist, goddess, ancient jazz priestess of Mother Africa. Race and gender. Race and class. So I'm a Black, Indigenous, Cuban, Nigerian, American woman who's trans. I'm the daughter of an immigrant. I come from the ghettos of Baltimore. People have to understand what all of the histories of all of those identities in order to understand really my positionality within the world. There are poor black people, there are rich black people, there are black cis women, there are black trans women. And so intersectionality is telling us that we have to discuss race in particular, right? Like, cause that's the topic that I'm using. Like if we're talking about race that we have to talk about it in its full scope. Yes, we are sharing an experience because for example, two black people, we are sharing this experience because we're both black, but I'm a black trans woman and so Numbers don't lie, and we all know that black trans women um, in particular are some of the most marginalized in our community and the most affected by structural, structural oppression. There's this concept that we are all given the same opportunities, but it's not true. If we look historically and we talk about, you know, this idea of pulling yourself up by the bootstraps, black people actually did pull themselves up by their bootstraps. But we then have places like Tulsa, Oklahoma in 1921. There was thriving black neighborhoods, black people, buying from black businesses, owning black businesses, investing in black businesses. And right, and that's what they're told. All you have to do is be rich and nobody can ever hurt you again. All you have to do is buy into the system and move upward and you'll be safe. What then happened was their white neighbors would then come and literally commit acts of genocide. And so now today, right, we have people who could have had old money who are now poor. And so what is that psychologically saying to these people? That when you thrive, when you succeed, you're still not safe. And so we're talking about race and class and we're not understanding the history of race and class as it presents itself in America in particular, because that's where we're living, right? And we're having a fool's conversation. If someone comes to me and they say to me, you are creating differences. I would say, no, that's actually not true. Because in my indigenous cultures, people who were different were still essential to society. Within European cultures, particularly within the rise of uh, patriarchy and the way that it manifests through religion, is that differences, little by little, were no longer celebrated and they were stamped out. And the one thing that, that structural oppression gives us that we should all aspire to generally is of a cis, het, white man. So when we're talking about intersectionality, right? I'm always being an intersectional being because I'm all of these things always at once. If you're having a conversation with me and you are having, you're not having a conversation understanding um, that I come with all of those identities within the conversation, then how are we supposed to move forward? Mm -hmm.